if a natural disaster would hit Nakusa. What kind of disaster? A natural. That would be with the fire department, ambulance, police, other workers. There is an emergency plan. Uh, emergency management has a plan set aside. Um, and I know they work on those. I don't know if they, I don't think they drill very often, but I know they're all aware of the plan. Well, it, it's, getting closer to us. Oh yeah. And we were only about a mile, a mile and a half, but a couple of years ago. Oh. Hit the campground instead mm -hmm. of Nakusa. Yeah. Well, they've all got plans and, I mean, I know they work with emergency management quite often. I know Sean, you guys do. And Yeah. Well, I've got a few questions, but I, if it's all right with the council and you, if, if when the agenda item comes up, if I could just ask a question at that time. What is your, I know you had some discussion about the... Uh... Well, the Ordinance 581, I guess my, my concern on that, I thought that was coming up somewhere, is that uh, I, I just think that that should be looked at again because I, I just feel you're opening up a big can of worms on that. And I'm willing to volunteer my services if you want to get some free advice from someone that's pretty well knowledgeable <coughs> on that. And if not, that's fine. But I just, I just think it's opening up a big can of worms. And uh, um, you better speak now. I'll see 581, and then you did. That was a few months back. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I just, I just happened to see it. I know you're going to be using it, you know, for another agenda item that on the. Um, condemnation of that house or whatever. Oh. Awful lot of houses that have dilapidated or defective shingles. You know, a lot of houses need paint. There's, and if you read that, I think that you're opening up, like I said, a big can of worms for an awful lot of people that if you're going to single out a couple of the real bad ones, you're inviting somebody that gets a citation to say, hey, well, what about my neighbor? And what about this guy? What about this guy? And I think you need to tweak that ordinance so that it doesn't encompass quite a number of the homes in the city. Because the way I read it, it does. And that's, that's it's strictly a comment, uh, you know, from someone that's been involved in it in a lot, for a lot of years. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just, I think there's a lot of people, and there's people in this room that the way I read that ordinance, they're in violation of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just I just think it's something that should be looked at again. So it's just strictly a courtesy comment. Well, I mean, we did adopt it, but there's nothing that says we can't go back and, yeah. and relook at it again. So I mean, that's well. If you uh, decide to do that, and if you refer it back to a committee, I would like to be invited to come and give you some comments at that time. Mm -hmm. That's all I'm asking. And if you don't want the help, that's fine. You know, I'm just I'm just volunteering it okay. because I'm pretty knowledgeable and in that type of stuff and in that field. Mm -hmm. okay. so. Right. so some free some free um, some free advice. That's all that's all I'm offering. Well it's already been adopted you know, like two months ago, wasn't it? So yeah, uh, we can just put it did that come through it came through public safety, didn't it? Yeah. So we could put it just put it on your next month's agenda and yeah. we can discuss it again. And that would be native it's always the first Tuesday. Okay. And we have it at 5.15, so. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. You're more than welcome to come. Okay. Fair enough. Okay. I'll give you enough time to sit no. down and talk. Yeah. I'm just so annoyed in the minutes that you're in a tense and you're discussing Ordinance 581, 
and dilapidated housing in the city, and the issue will be further discussed in public safety. Cool. That's fine. That's wonderful. Thanks. That was easy. I, I'm easy to please. I'm just trying to help. Anything else, Dave? Um, there was a few other items, but I guess when you guys get to them, if, if I so raise my hand and if you decide to call on me, I, I can ask a question. Okay, you can do that. We always did it in the past that way. It's been a while since I've been here. So. Okay. Okay. Uh, Monica, we will turn the floor over to you with our audit report. All right. So I handed out three books to everyone. Um, I'm going to go through the 2014 audit for the city of Nucusa. I'm going to start with, I guess I should tell you who I am. I'm Monica Hauser from Hawkins Ash CPA, so I'm the partner on the audit. Um, we're going to go through the summary financial report. You're right. You're right. There you go. Yeah, I don't want to be in there. You <laughs> Good try, though. <laughs> yeah. There, thank you. Yep. All right, so the summary financial report is one of the smaller books that everyone should have received. We do this report for council presentation only. It does not include all the required disclosures. So we just do it. It makes our um, presentations a little bit easier for everyone to understand versus flipping through the 70-some page document. Yeah, thank you. Um, so I'll just note on page two, um, under the first paragraph, it says, we express an unmodified opinion on the audit. So that's a clean opinion, the best opinion you can get. And then the second paragraph says, basically what I just told you, that these summary financials do not contain all the required disclosures. So they're not um, your full financial statements. Next, we're going to flip over to page three. This is a combined balance sheet for the city. Um, so it includes all of your funds including your water and sewer funds. Um, you can see that your total assets decreased about 2.7 million or 8.5%. And a lot of that is due to, you can see the intercon line there, that decreased about 2 million. So, so we, we do loans between funds to account for things. We may pay some cash out of the general fund when really it was a water sewer expense. So that gets reported as a inner fund receivable and payable. So those numbers fluctuate. This year it came down two million, so that's why our assets decreased that much. Under liabilities, the overall decrease in liabilities was 2.7 million, or 15%. Again, inner fund, now this is the payable side of it, decreased two million. Your long-term debt, now this is just your water and sewer debt, that decreased about 700,000, that's just your current year principal payments. <clears throat> Equity, the net position, that's your water and sewer fund balance or equity. General fund balance, the balance as of December 31st, 2014 was 1.9 million. So it was an, had an increase of 431,000 from 2013 to 2014 or about 28%. And then your other fund balances represents all your other TIF funds and all the other funds that the city has. Capital projects and that stuff is all included in there. You can see the chart shows your general fund balance. You can see we have a big spike in 2014. Um, we always do a percentage, your unassigned fund balance as a percentage of your current year expenditures. It's a ratio we use in um, municipal auditing. This year that percentage is 40.2%. So that's very good. Last year was 23%. So I always say we like to see between that 25 to 35% range. So you're um, sitting pretty good there. Monica, it's one thing though is that there was about two or three hundred thousand dollars in closeout from one of the construction accounts that went back into there. So that definitely had an effect on that uh, uh, undesignated, right? Yep, that was 311000 okay. that came from sewer into general. Do you happen to have photocopies of those, those check registers? By chance? Because mm -hmm. otherwise, if we went had that 311 in there, you know, it would have been an increase, but not, not that significant. Right. 
right there. All right, now we're going to focus on just the general fund for a little bit. Um, page four. This shows our budget to actual for 2014, and then we compare it to 2013 to actual. Um, property taxes had a slight increase. That was due to a levy increase. Um, intergovernmental, a lot of this is grants. So in 2014, we received a local road improvement grant for about 17,000. We had none in 2013. Public charges for services. Um, there was a slight increase in the ambulance service income in 2014. You can see long-term debt issued. We issued 400,000 in 2013 and none in 2014. And then the operating transfer in. So this is um, the budget piece of it Include is just for your water pilot, the payment in lieu of taxes, that water pays general. So actual is that sewer transfer that Joe was referring to and the water pilot. And that sewer transfer again was 311,000. So overall total revenue was over budget, being over budget and revenue is a good thing, about 515,000 um, and it was up from last year about 62,000. And you can see the chart there shows where our sources of revenue are coming from. So the major sources are intergovernmental, so grants, state aid, that sort of thing, it's 36%. Um, taxes and special assessments is 23%. Charges for services is 22%. And then this year, because of that sewer transfer, transfers were 16%. The next page is our expenditures for the general fund. Again, we're showing budget to actual and then compared to 2013 actual. So overall expenditures were over budget, about 84,000. And overall, from 2013 to 2014, there was a decrease of about 122,000, or 3.6%. And you can see that the biggest changes in capital outlay so in 2013, if you remember, we bought a leaf machine, defibrillator, two Tahoes. We did Delwood Lane, Peckham Road, North Street, and South Section Street, just to name a few. Um, we didn't have a lot of projects in 2014. We bought a mower, a welder, and a trailer, and a truck. So a lot of it is um, what happens with the capital outlay is we'll you know build up the fund balance and then without having to go out and borrow for things. We use our fund balance and then build it back up again in the next few years. So last year we took a dip and now we're starting to build it back up. You can see the chart shows the expenditures. Public works is 43%. Public safety is 46%. General government, 12%. Culture, recreation, education is 4%. And capital outlay is 4%. On page six, we're going to talk a little bit about water and sewer. Um, just kind of a reminder, we did a water rate increase in 2013. Um, we did not do an increase in 14. So um, overall, the expenditures for water were up quite a bit from 2013 to 2014. If you can remember, we had a really bad winter in early 14. Um, we had you know, some run orders on and a lot of repairs. Um, we ended up having a well inspection, some repairs associated with that. We did a gravity filter tank system repair, which was a significant amount of money. So overall, our operating income was 221,000 for water for 2014. Sewer had a loss of about 154,000. And then our overall change in net position, water had a loss of 163,000 and sewer had a loss of 581,000. The reason sewer is so big is remember we transferred that 311,000 out. You can see that under the transfer outline. So um, because sewer has a operating loss, 
I guess it's just kind of a word of caution. Make sure you're watching those rates. Make sure that you're um, checking to see when you need to do those rate increases and that your revenues are covering your expenditures. Well, based on this, I mean, we got to do something now, <coughs> probably. Probably at least should run some numbers and make sure there was no unusual repairs in 13 and 14, you know, that aren't going to happen again next year. Because, uh, you know, every year we, we do a uh, DNR report and there's a financial section on there. Mm -hmm. and that's what's, what's dogging us. That's where we get our F, okay. F on our report card for that. Everything else is in pretty good shape, but the financial, we get an F on it and you get 40 point uh, thing. And uh, we were kind of on notice you know, they're watching us, so. Uh -huh. okay. I, I, I know that we want to make sure that we for sure look at all of our operating expenses. For both those yeah, it isn't really the operating expenses well, as much as it is the depreciation. It's really hurting. They have a good reason why we would raise it, you know, not just because we're lost. We should really look at everything. So yeah. Uh -huh. in, in Bill alluded to the fact that depreciation is in there. Yeah. That's 230000 That's a non-cash number, but we like to say try to build up enough. If you cover your depreciation, hopefully you're basically saving enough so you can pay for future repairs. So 10 years down the road when you have a major repair, hopefully you've saved up so you can pay for that without having to go borrow. Well, if we'd have covered our depreciation, we'd have had a net income. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That's always my argument with the with this DNR report. Yeah, it's, it's not like we're. I know. Because the question is on the DNR report is does your operating revenues cover your operating expenses? Yes or no? No. And if it's no, 40 point uh, penalty right there off Got the bat. It. Yes. And they don't exclude depreciation on there, huh? No, they do not. Okay. That's what I was going to ask. Yeah. And. Yeah, because I mean, if you know, if you were in the office, I mean, uh, you know, there's a lot of a lot of complaints about utility bills, big time. Mm -hmm. Did we raise? I can't remember if we did sewer at the same time we did water. We did a three percent increase on sewer, and then okay. the DNR was the was in charge of the water increase, but but that wasn't too popular, and uh, but the DNR are also the ones that are. Making you buy more chemicals, mm -hmm. and you know that when you do this annual report, then you know we can kind of, we kind of fluffed it a little bit. We kind of said, well, the rate increase was kind of like not for a complete year. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that so because they wanted to know does it does it equal revenues uh, cover expenses? Yes or no? No. And then then they want an explanation for it. That that was my explanation that I could give them, which was a little a little weak. <laughs> But it wasn't an, an excuse. But now, full year data, you know. Yeah. And just one thing to keep in mind: if you continuously do little increases, it's a lot less alarming to the public than if you end up having to go out and do a 20% increase all at once. Right. So, just something to keep in mind. How long does our appreciation going to be on that? Forever. Right. A lot of um, so water and sewer works a little bit different than a normal entity okay. because we just basically do a flat percentage. We you know it's I think it's over fifty years or something. Mm -hmm. If you have equipment, it's a lot lower. Yeah. But then you got to keep in mind every time we do any repair, major repairs, we're adding to that. So depreciation is, doesn't fluctuate a lot in the utilities from year to year. We actually have the money that covers operating expenses. Yes. But it's just, yes, we're operating expenses, we're doing very well. Yeah. If we never checked that, what, what would the NR eventually say? I mean, what, what would they do? <laughs> I think they didn't tell us how much we'd have to read it. We'd have to read it. No. <laughs> and they yeah, could they probably will. take it over. Yeah. Is that they have, yes, they have. Well, they're, 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 the, they're the they're the big big man on campus. I'm asking the questions also so they know. Yeah. Right. Well, that's yes. part of it. That's what it is. No, if we don't do it, they all will. They will, and then it might be very unfavorable. Yeah. Because I mean, like every year, that's the first thing. In, like environmental loans and stuff, they they want to see copies, of auto reports, and stuff. You know. 
kind of like to see that. Yeah. No, we know, we know what the so a lot of it has to do with the, like us because we borrow money from the right. water yeah, and stuff like that. Safe drinking, yeah. There's one actually. Fortunately, there was one loan. It was from 20 years ago. The original wastewater loan from '96 has been paid off now. So that part's good. Yeah. But we that's something. But uh, um, we've got plenty to go yet. Okay. <clears throat> we know what the surface it is now. It's just a matter of you having to sit down and they're gonna have to spend time to divide and see what it's gonna cost. So you're gonna have to do a rate increase. So. Yeah. But I do. I agree. If you do two or three percent every year, it doesn't hit you as hard as twenty. Right. And that's one one part of the bill that we do have say so over right now. Yeah. You know, even if the water won't let us do it like that. Water, you can do a simplified rate increase, um, so you don't have to go out and do the full blown rate application. You can do a simplified if you meet certain qualifications, and that's a flat. I think it's 3% now. Yeah, I think it is. So um, you don't have to do a whole lot of work on that versus if you wait and you have to do the full rate application, there's a lot of work involved with those. Mm -hmm. yeah. But for us right now, we're, we're, we're okay with what? Yeah, because we just did mm -hmm. one in 13, I would You're say. Right. And we should be good, even better this year because hopefully we won't have the same amount of repairs. We have to redo well this year. Yeah. Yeah. That's 100 and something thousand. I don't think it's going to be. The same as our last project. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. so. yeah, okay, um, on page eight, this is our overall financial information, basically the overall summary of the audit. Again, on the independent auditor's report, we issued a clean opinion. General capital assets, we added 291,000 of general capital assets. 177 was for infrastructure, and that was for the safety building upgrades, so that building here. Um, 32,000 was for equipment, and 81,000 was for vehicles. Water and sewer utilities added 145,000 of fixed assets during 2014. Long-term debt, the general long-term debt decreased about 182,000. Our total geo debt balance right now is 2.6 million, so we're well below our um, debt limit of 5.2 million. Then we have an independent auditor's report on compliance and internal control over financial reporting. Um, it says here the, only, the issue we had was um, segregation of duties due to the size of the office staff. This is very common for a small municipality. Um, a lot of times it's impractical to hire enough people to have the proper accounting segregation of duties. One other issue that I didn't write in here, but I'll bring it up is um, we had to disclose a compliance violation for being over budget um, for 2014. So your overall budget was over by 83,000. And some of this is due to how you have a carryover policy at the end of the year. You take unused funds and use it the next year. So when we do our financial statements on the GAAP basis, the generally accepted accounting principles, um, it shows that it's over budget. So again, that's not a major there's no penalties associated with that. And then the other small book is the independent auditor's report on communication with those charged with governance. Um, this is required communication to the council. There's no major changes from last year. Um, basically, we have to disclose if we adopt any new accounting policies, um, our accounting estimates, so depreciation. And then we have an allowance for municipal court receivable in there. If we have any difficulties during the audit, we had none. Um, we're required to disclose our audit journal entries. Those are on page five, so there was only four. So again, it was a very clean audit. Um, and then the last page there, just some management advisory comments. These are all repeated from prior year. Um, the do to do from accounts or our inner funds, just kind of keep an eye on those, make sure we're repaying what we can so we don't have those balances standing out there. And yeah, we talked about that before. Okay. Yep. Um, the tax agency fund, right now we don't um, use the tax agency fund, so that's the city's choice. Um, and then pay rate documentation, um, we just ask that 
for us to have an audit trail when we audit pay rates. Um, just we would like to see a little bit more documentation. Um, and then I handed everyone the true, the full financial statements. I'm not going to go through them. There was um, no new note disclosures or anything. So if you take them home and you end up having a question, feel free to contact me. Um, Joe and Al both have my contact information. So, um, and just a word that next year we'll be talking about GASB or the Governmental Accounting Standards Board number 68. Um, has to do with pension, adopting a new standard to how we're going to account for your pension plan. So the WR, the city participates in the WRS. Well, we have to now. The WRS is going to calculate what their unfunded liability is, and then whatever the city of Nakusa's portion of that overall pot is, the city of Nakusa is going to have to record. So from what I've been told, the WRS is a well-funded plan, so it's not going to be huge dollars, but you'll see a lot of note disclosures, and it'll require a little bit of a little bit more work on that for next year. I thought we paid that all off. We did. That's yeah, yeah that's something huge, different. Huge. Okay. A huge chunk of change. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, that's that's different than this. This is um, basically just funding basically you have an actuarial study calculating all the people that are in the plan and what's our projected payout gonna be. So all right. so everybody's covering everybody's bill. It's still kind of like I thought what they did back in the 90s, though, kind of on that same principle, though. You're not going to get billed for it, though, like you were, I mean, then you had to, you, you know, they... It was like we were billed for it, and then we could charge interest on it. Yeah. Right. And then it built up. Off, and then know, a lot of people interest. went out and borrowed money from an outside party to pay it off because yeah. it was so... The interest was cheaper to borrow than it was. Right, right. But yeah, this... This is going to be a liability on your financial statements. It's not going to change what you're going to have to pay WRS. It's just it's an accounting um, book entry. So just Where to make it with us. Yeah, um, it's effective for your audit for 12-31-15. So it'll all be encompassed in next year's audit. Yeah. Or I guess it's really this year's audit. Does anybody have any questions? So overall, basically, we're sitting okay. Yep, yep. The fund balance has came back up pretty nice. So, um, you know, having to go out and short short term borrow—that's one of the things we look at. Um, a lot of times, if you're in a position where you're short term borrowing every year, we say you probably don't have enough sitting in fund balance because you're having to go do that. And then the three hundred eleven thousand dollars—I know it was a little bit of a hot topic here over on uh, transferring monies and stuff, but this. Was cons this was like when we were doing the 2010 utility construction? You were, you were we did these bills, all the yeah, yeah, all these absolutely. general that you know, yeah. and before we had the financing and everything, so that was kind of a payback, right? right. Yeah, and I was looking at the they don't show in the in these books, but I was looking at the graphs, and we had a big spike in 2011, and that was all that money coming in, so we brought it all in, and it sat in the sewer fund till we got that whole project closed out, and now we're Basically repaying general fund. Yeah, it was okay once I received. I'm glad you are because uh, yeah. it's, it's, uh, there's no end to it. No, I know. It's, it's the deep. You know. All All right. All right, thank you. When Angie looks up the art, or. Very much. It was very nice. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Here's a motion and a second on the floor to approve the 2014 audit. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Thank Going you. into committee reports. First is Ways and Means. Ways and Means have one meeting to report on. I move to accept the minutes of the rent. Second. There's a motion and a second to approve the minutes of the Ways and Means Committee as read. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> to the Honorable Mayor and members of the Nakusa Common Council, a Ways and Means meeting was held on Tuesday, May 12th at 6.15 p.m. in the Nakusa Council Chambers. 
Members present were Emmett Peterson, Chairman, Terry Schmansky, Secretary, Robert Schultz, Garrett Kuhn. Also in attendance were Larry Krubisak, Mayor Al Marco, Robert Wenzel, August Boyack, Police Chief Sean Woods, Bobby Hersberg, and Dave Smith. Uh, item number one, we audited the bills. Number two, we discussed meeting minutes scanning proposal. Number three, we discussed sending Bobby Hurstberg to Wisconsin Dells May 21st, 215 for tips, court refresher training, mileage only, and sending Bobby Hurstberg June 9th, 2015 to Madison for tips, court training, mileage, and lunch. Number four, we heard the library report. Uh, move to accept uh, number three. Second. There's a motion and a second to adopt item three. For the Ways and Means Minute, uh, Ropa? Wenzel? Yes. Peterson? Yes. Way? Yes. Hamilton? Yes. Schultz? Yes. Krupsack? Yes. Kuhn? Yes. Schmansky? Yes. Next is Public Works. <laughs> public Works has one meeting to report. I move to have minutes to second the draft. There's a motion and a second to approve the minutes of the Public Works Committee is read. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? To the Honorable Mayor, members of the Coast County Council, a public works meeting was held on Tuesday, May 5th, 2015 at 4.30 p.m. in the Coos Council Chambers. Members present were Larry Krupsack, Gary Shemansky, Gary Kuhn, and Robert Schultz. Also in attendance were me on Al Marco, Brad Hamilton, Emmett Peterson, August Boyack, Terry Fancher, Bill Cavalli from the DPW. How many times are you going to go to this meeting anyway? Yeah, I know. I'm just okay. looking at that. Okay. Oh, uh, you item one. You did the minutes, so. <laughs> mm -hmm. You did the minutes, so. Hey, it was a damn typewriter. Don't blame me. <laughs> item one. Discuss possible updates on water ordinance. <laughs> Item two, recommend additional credit of $72 to Jim Melke on the water bill. Item three, recommend Wood County resurface a portion of Maple Street and have American Asphalt resurface a portion of Cedar Street for approximately $16,000. That's both jobs together. If there's no questions, we move to adopt items two and three. There's a motion and a second on the floor to approve items two and three of the Public Works Committee. Roll call it. Boyack? Yes. Schultz? Yes. Wenzel? Yes. Krupsack? Yes. Schmansky? Yes. Kuhn? Yes. Peterson? Yes. Hamilton? Yes. Next is public safety. Okay. Public safety at one meeting. Uh, minutes to be accepted as written. Second. Second. Motion a second to approve the minutes of the public safety committee as written. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The Honorable Mayor and members of the Inclusive Common Council of Public Safety Committee. The meeting was held Thursday, May 5th, 2015, at 5 15 p.m. in the Inclusive Council Chambers. Members present were Terry Schmansky, Brad Hamilton, Emma Peterson, and Robert Wenzel. Also in attendance with Mayor Al Marco, Gary Cohen, Larry Krubsack, August Boyack, Bill Caberly, and Trey Fancher. Mike Archie, David Ryan Schmidt, Don Harnish, Ken Moody, and Sean Woods. Number one, discuss Police Policy Manual 322-341. Number two, discuss Fire Department bylaws. Uh, number three, recommend committee and council member notice dates and times be placed on the Fire Department sign. Number four, discuss rehab fire equipment. Number five, Fire Department to ask post office about putting up a separate mailbox. <coughs> Any questions? Okay, uh, recommend. Uh, Motion for number three. Second. There's a motion and a second to approve item three of the Public Safety Committee report. Uh, roll call. <clears throat> now they're they're going to take care of this now, right? Because I mean, I, I said all you have to do is email it to. Uh, his, he's got a special email for that, just like when you're emailing us the, yeah. the notices. Mm -hmm. You just add that onto your emails, email thing, and he'll, he'll pop it on. Do you have that on email address or whatever? He's supposed to, I thought he said he was going to give it. Yeah, we'll get it. Okay. 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 Here we go. We'll get it. Okay. Yep. It's just an email. He said the e all you got to do is email it. I'm going to send an email out to this thing. Okay. 
All right, just so I so we're yeah. Good. yeah. Okay. Schmanski? Yes. Wag? Yeah. Hamilton? Yes. Boone? Yes. Peterson? Yes. Schultz? Yes. Wenzel? Yes. Grimsett? Yes. Next is property recreation and human affairs. Um, make motion to accept the minutes as printed. Second. There is a motion and a second to approve the minutes of the property recreation and human affairs meeting. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The Honorable Mayor and members of the Goose County Council for the Property Recreation and Human Affairs Committee meeting was held on Tuesday, May 5th, 2015 at 6 p.m. in the Goose Council Chambers. Members present were Robert Wenzel, Chairman, Garrett Kuhn, Secretary, Emmett Peterson, and Juan Foya. Also to attendance were Mayor Al Marco, Larry Kupsak, Brad Hamilton, Chad Heyman, Tammy Heyman, Keith Wilkes, and Joel Goodness from the Humane Society. Members of the Pumpkin Fest Board, Josh Colo, Sean Woods, Bruce Chief, Terry Fancher, DPW, and Bill Cabrew, DPW. Number one, recommend the nonprofit fee for the Humane Society benefit. Number two, discuss new business coming into town. Number three, one, two, go on. Pump, state that Pumpkin Fest has the rights to Riverside Park for Pumpkin Fest weekend as in the past. Number four, recommend resolution in order to raise buildings at 307 First Street. Number five, we discussed the skate park. Number six, recommend planting trees this month at the business park. Number seven, discussed riverbank cleaning. Number eight, discussed community center. And number nine, discussed industrial <coughs> park. Any questions? Uh, comment if I may. As part of um, your recommendation for number four, recommend resolution in order to raise building at 307 First Street. If you could also um, recommend accepting the building inspector's report which recommends um, raising the building. Yeah, we we, we uh, uh, want that you want that on there, you want that on there. Okay, we'll do it in a little bit. The business is not good. Take what we have to do in here. Make a motion to accept. Second. One. Would four then apply? Uh, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Four. And six. Okay. Use second break? Yes, okay. Yeah. Recommendation is second to approve items one, four, four and six. six. The property recreation human yeah. affairs. Uh, roll call. Kuhn? Yes. Peterson? Yes. Wenzel? Yes. Baskin? Yes. Way? Yes. Krupsay? Yes. Schultz? Yes. Hamilton? Yes. Next is wage and salary. <coughs> Wage and salary at one meeting this month, I move for, to adopt the message. Right. There's a motion and a second to approve the wage and salary committee report. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? To the Honorable Mayor and members of the Napusa Common Council, wage and salary meeting was held on Wednesday, May 6, 2015, 3.45 p.m. at Napusa Senior Community Center. Members present were Brad Hamilton, Chairperson, Larry Krupsack, Secretary, Robert Schultz, and August Boyack. Also in attendance were Evan Peterson, Bill Caverly, DPW, Sean Woods, Police Chief, Joe Rush, Second City Clerk, Bobby Herzberg, City Treasurer, Mayor Al Marco, Brian Mahan, Gary Twistbrocker, Josh Polo, Chris Meyer, and Andrew Berg. Item 1, motion by Schultz, second by Wagg, to go into closed session pursuant to Wisconsin Statutes 19.851C to discuss 2015 wages and benefits for full time police employees and full time employees. <coughs> yes. Item 2, Motion by Schultz, second by Wyack, to go into open session pursuant to Wisconsin Statutes 19.852 to make recommendations on closed session matters. All members will be yes. Item three, recommend 2% increase wage increase for city clerk, city treasurer, chief of police, and public works director retroactive to January 1st, 2015. So I have one question. Any questions? Do, do we have uh, job descriptions for all those departments? We have job description for public works director, I believe, and chief of police. So, one question. Okay. Move for adopt item three. Second. There's a motion and a second to approve item three of the wage and salary committee. Uh, roll call. 
Peterson? Yes. Cool? Yes. Wenzel? Yes. Schultz? Yes. Way? Yes. Grimsett? Yes. Schmansky? Yes. Allen? Yes. Okay, next is old business. I had one appointment that was open at the police committee the night of the committee meeting, or the reorganizational meeting about an hour and a half after the meeting, the guy called me and said he would take it. So, um, recommend adding Ken Hilders for the three-year term on the police commission. So move. Second. Motion and second to approve uh, Ken Hilders. We need a report? Yeah, we'll do one. Okay. Second to approve the building inspector's report for the building at 307 First Street. So move them. Second. Second. The 40, what was that again though? 307. 307. 307. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> 307 first street. Any discussion? Okay. Um, thank you, Your Honor. Um, I just just have a question on the uh, raising the building. Is it is it still there's a mortgage on the building? I understand. That's correct. There is. Okay. So, but the city doesn't actually have ownership of the building. Is it is who, where is the actual ownership? Does that still belong to the mortgage? The no, mortgage holder? Right now, the, the owner of the building is still in the property owner's name. The mortgage holder has never commenced a foreclosure, and they would only become a potential owner if they foreclosed on the building. So the owner is in the name of the um, uh, couple that took ownership uh, by deed. Okay, so we don't have you don't have to notify the mortgage company then. But we do have to notify. You do them. have to notify them. Yes. Publish in the newspaper and also uh, mail notice, and so we will publish a um, a notice of the raise order and the Wisconsin Rapids Daily Tribune, and we'll use our best efforts to find what office should receive uh, this. Um, this raise order will also personally serve um, both the owners of the building. Okay. I just was curious how how this how you were going to do this to make sure that the mortgage company doesn't all of a sudden pop in after you've knocked the house down and say, "Hey, what'd you do?" The, uh, and that is a concern. But the reality is, is that before the mortgage company pops in, we expect that the property will be. Uh, become owned by Wood County. Okay. Uh, by it goes in front of the it goes in front of the uh, county board in August for purposes of tax deeding. So at that point, someone else could, in theory, in theory, could purchase that house from the county. It'll, we expect it'll be raised by them. Oh, okay, so you're not going to wait until the county actually takes ownership then, is what you're saying? Uh, that's not correct. Okay. It just seems unusual. I just was curious. You've got to see the pictures of the building. I, I, I heard about them, Brad. I, I'm not disputing oh, that. It's, it's terrible. It's got to go for safety. People that live there, it's amazing the neighbors haven't said anything. Thank you for having patience. And I'm so glad, great God, we didn't have anybody hurt. It's just, it's terrible. There, there is a reason why we plan on doing this before the county gets it. Um, right now, 
we don't expect any opposition to this raise order. The, the <coughs> holder of the mortgage is not going to want this property back. And if we wait until the county becomes the owner of the property, we in essence would be issuing our raise order against the county. In other words, we'd be sticking the bill to the county. The county could then uh, ignore the raise order and take and force us to go to court. And we could be in litigation on this issue for about 18 months. And it just isn't uh, worth going down that route. <clears throat> Makes sense. Makes sense. And just what would happen? What happens to the land then after the house is down? Who would the city take ownership? And no, could you? No, the city, when the house is down, the owner of the land will be the same owner who was the owner when the house was sitting there. Okay. Okay. And when the county exercises their right to tax deed the property, then the county will be the owner. So the county, we expect that the county will become the owner by tax deed of a vacant parcel of land. Okay. Interesting. Thank you. Appreciate that. Any other discussions? Uh, roll call. What are we doing? Roll call for what? Uh, roll call for Accepting that. Okay, oh, the roll. Okay. The, the uh, building inspector report. report. Okay, the building inspector. Yep. <laughs> I was just just to yeah, the whole yeah, right. thing. Hello. No, I got it. No, I got it written down. Right. Yeah, it's all right. Seriously, just yeah. Right, you're doing faster than me. I can tell you that. Right. Right. Hamilton. Yes. Where? Yeah. Coon. Yes. Pearson. Yes. Schmansky. Yes. Wenzel. Yes. Scholz. Yes. Krupsan. Yes. The other thing on the new business um, is the code enforcement officer. Um, Sean has interviewed and Bill interviewed a couple of individuals. Um, their recommendation is Tim Roszewski, uh to be hired as the um, code enforcement officer. Been in for like three months. Every day through August. Yeah, through August. You guys came up. Okay, I got decided to hire Tim Wyshewski as co enforcement yeah. officer. For the, for on, uh, what is the term again now? Till, uh, oh, wait, for 30. till the end of August? That's going to be included in his job. Yeah. Oh, that's a so. job. Uh, so I need a motion, a second to. So moved. Second. No, I like all my. Roll call vote. Peterson. Yes. Schmansky. Yes. Krupsack. Yes. Kuhn. Yes. Wenzel. Yes. Schultz. Yes. Hamilton. Yes. Webb. Yes. Anything else under new business? Going into monthly reports. First is police department's monthly reports. So move. Second. There's a motion and a second to approve the police department's monthly report. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Next is public works monthly report. So moved. Second. Motion and a second to approve the police or the public works department. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Next is the ambulance department's monthly Aye. report. Second. Motion and a second for the ambulance department. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Next is the fire department's monthly report. So moved. Second. There's a motion and a second for the fire department's monthly report. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Next is the building inspector's monthly report. So moved. Motion and a second for the building inspector's report. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, community center report. There's an additional page, couple pages on there if anybody uh, can put a, you know, a listing on there as far as what's booked. And basically, mm -hmm. it's full. It's the first time since we opened it that it's been booked this fast. Yeah. We're starting to get around, though. Yeah. yeah. We'll, we're going to have to build another one. 
Council just gesture. All in favor of the community center monthly report. Opposed? Airport Commission monthly report. Do you have anything, Brad, other than the report? Anything to bring up? Not too well. We're going to have, uh, we're setting up a uh, meeting with the the uh, FAA and the, and the state is making us do more trees around the airport. Um, they don't go into, obviously, any city in the Coosa land, but they do penetrate both into the rapids, Grand Rapids and Port. Um, That's why they cut it all down there? It's yeah, good. if you see trees coming down, you know, we could just lop the tops off and you'd have a bunch of flat top trees and that one look good. But we've got to, when the, when the federal and state government tell us we've got to take them down, they got to come down, at least the height, and then usually they just come down. Uh, it's not fun, it's not nothing anybody wants to do, but we are having, a, in June, I believe, sometime, they're setting it up, they're having a meeting in Rapids, or maybe even the Coosa, if we can't find a spot in Rapids, they're having a meeting uh, that people can come down and take a look at the maps. They can, we're going to do an overlay, so like here's the city, and then here's the overlay of what we need to do, and here's your house, and here's your house, etc. And it's not going to make anybody happy, but we have no choice. We have to do it. Private property, too? It's all, oh yeah, the majority of this is going to be private property. If we're, we, we did something like on their wastewater treatment plant, it was nothing. They just dropped them. They didn't even think about it. You know, uh, it's mostly private property. Do they get uh, compensated, don't they? No, they do not. No, they do not. Um, I do not know if they have to, I believe they have to pay for it. But I, I'm not quite sure on that. I'm going to say no, 95% 90, no. They have to drop them themselves. But if we, if that's wrong, I'll, I'll definitely tell you about it. But it's, that's this part that sucks about this whole thing. And you, you got no choice because you bought a you bought a house next to airport land. It, you know, you know. Think of what we go through. Think of what Chicago goes through. Oh, yeah. You know, Milwaukee and Madison and all the rest of them. So ultimately, it's because of safety. Or yes, that's what it is. It's, it's for. It's you're, you're correct. It's for. For uh, flight patterns when they when they land and, and take off, so that they if they're a little bit low or a little bit high, they're not going to hit any trees. They're not going to hit power lines. That's why we don't allow power lines. We don't allow you know there uh, there's no uh, towers, cell towers within so many hundred feet of the place or thousand feet. So those provisions would allow or doesn't make any changes on bigger planes getting in. The size of the plane doesn't matter. It's it's the height uh, the height as you're taking off so many feet up to so many feet out. And I don't ask me the numbers. I don't remember them off, off the top of my head. But it's with the with the big with the big thing going down on at Rome with the uh, golf courses coming in and now skeet shooting and trap shooting. There is a lot of interest in in landing sizable jets at Rapids, and we're working through that. That's nothing. Actually, it's another thing. We're looking at uh, getting a. Uh, we're putting out a couple of different terminals, or excuse me, sheds for them. Um, we're also we're redoing the um, we're redoing re upping the uh, FBO fixed based operator, which is the guy that runs the place. We're asking for people that are interested in doing that. We're going to be putting that out pretty soon to feelers to new ones. The guys the term is up, five year contract is up, and so you you have to come in, you have to get a. Uh, give us five different or seven different things so we can all look at them and then we will select from the one that's best advantageous to the airport. So obviously the price is there and then uh, what you're going to do, you know, what you need to do, what you have to do, what we'd like you to do is all in on that. But that's coming up in July, I believe, July 2nd. Do you have to extend the runways? No, we found out, I thought we did. I thought we had to uh, to extend one runway, but we do not. Uh, the runways are fine. We do need to rebuild the runway, and I yeah, believe in 17, we're going to have to rebuild one of them. You can land your Gulf Stream there. The Gulf Stream is good. Your Gulf Stream, Gulf Stream is fine. <laughs> you got a 747. I wouldn't recommend it. If you land, they might just not get out of there. You know. No, it's, you might land into the wastewater. Well, yeah, into the wastewater. <laughs> yeah, your barrier is good. Yeah. Yeah. Wasn't there a talk at one point of maybe closing that road down there, that loop to the west, and making a bigger oh, airport east and west? There, yeah, there's, there's a bigger runway. There's been discussions on making bigger runways. Yeah, and how how we can do it if we can if we can shift it over a little bit or make cock it a little bit more. You know, that's all FAA. They decide how we do that. 
if we we have just right now we don't need it. Everything that needs to land there can, you know, with the with the uh, uh, instrumentation we have in the IFF and all the other happy things that they got to go through. It's it's amazing. If you got some, you got time, go up there. The the FBO will he'll come he'll come out. He'll give you a tour of the place. It's just really amazing what's going on up there. And like I said, with all the everything that's going on around us, it's it's going to be interesting. It's going to be very good. So. Uh, motion and a second to approve the airport commission. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Next is the bills. Ways and means 250, uh, Common Council 520, Public Works 250, Public Safety 250, Property Rec 250, Wage and Salary 250. Um, mayor's mayor's um, salary is six hundred dollars. Then we had the three uh, bill sheets. Move to approve the bill to present it. Second. Motion and second to approve the bills. Roll call. Schultz. Yes. Spansky. Yes. Krupsek. Yes. Wenzel. Yes. Hamilton. Yes. Wayne? Yes. Peterson? Yes. Hmm. Yes. Anybody have anything else? Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? There you go. <laughs>